streamers who are interested in sharing their story with the community. Um, they couldn't make it today. I tried to convince them, but their parents thought being in school was rather important. So I'm here to represent them and um, what they're asking for and their sort of their situation they find themselves in. Um, I was reflecting earlier today on a number of things that can happen that young kids can do blunders, mistakes, and that we as a society look at them and we think, well, we're not going to punish them for this mistake. They're going to learn from it, but they didn't really know what they were doing. Except with the dreamers. Many of these young children have come with their parents before they could walk, talk, feed themselves, and here they find themselves, age of 18, and society turns at them and says, and now you're a criminal. And I think um, what a shame it is, what, what damage we're doing to our communities, because when we look at the young people, um, one of them who is going to be here tonight, and unfortunately she's not here today, is an amazing young woman who is the president of the French National Honor Society. So not only does she speak Spanish and English, but she's master French. She is the um, second, her, her, she led her debate team to be the second in the state, in the state of Kentucky, um, among a number of other accomplishments. She's an honor scholar, and she is graduating and looking at the future options that she has, because she's not eligible for financial aid. She's not eligible for a lot of the things that American students need to get themselves through the higher education process. And so when I think about what we're doing when we waste someone like, what, like Ada, what we're doing when we waste someone like Jose, some of the students that I work with, their talent and their passion, and how, how damaging it is to our communities when we have these young people who, some of them perhaps were born here, and they straddle the line of, do I defend my parents, all these people calling them criminals, where is my real home? And then the ones who are brought here as children who really don't, and essentially don't have a home. Sometimes they come from countries and they're so young that they have no memories of that place, and they find themselves here in a place that's telling them they're not worthy of being citizens for crossing a line drawn along you know, a geographic region that they happen to come with their parents. And so they say to themselves, if I get sent home, where is that? And what does that mean for me? And as we have these young people who are growing up and asking themselves the questions that all young people ask themselves, theirs become more profound. Because oftentimes, you know, as I was growing and I was asking questions about myself, my father was an immigrant from Mexico. He was someone who came before our immigration laws were so tough. And he came in the early 60s, and he was a young boy working in our fields, and then a young man working in our factories. He was a young, um, another, again, a young man who was um, asked to fight for our country in Vietnam. And he came back, and then he became a man who graduated from um, a, a California university with a degree in engineering, and finally, someone who got his master's in business. And I think of all that he's contributed to our society and how Although it wasn't perfect, and his um, journey to become a citizen here was very long, he was able to do that. And with what he was given, he was able to create so much more. He was a small business owner. He raised a family of people, my, my brother, an engineer, myself. I'm going back for a master's in social work. And I think about each individual person who has the possibility to contribute like that. I look at the people that I, I stand next to as they tell their stories of, of the pain of losing a parent to deportation or fear they have every night going to bed that their parents are working third shift and they're not going to come home. And I think about how preventable those things are, how with some changes to our regulations and a broader perspective of what we want to be, not just a country of laws, which is necessary, but a country of community, a country where our society values itself in, in groups of, among each other as much as we value our GDP and our, our ability to produce and create ideas. And I think when we get to that point, when we recognize that the youth of our society will someday be the adults <coughs> leading our society, and that the damage we're doing to them are only going to further hurt us as a country, um, I hope that once the people of our, our government come to that place and they can see that the people who, at this point, aren't yet worthy to be citizens, will be the people who will be leading them someday. And so that, for me, gives me hope. That's why I do what I do. That's why I will continue to serve the Latino community and I know that if any of the dreamers were here today, um, their stories would be as painful to you as they are to me. So hopefully, my hope is this year, we will be able to change our system, address the problems, and think about people in society, and not just numbers and salaries and, and things, I suppose, that people think about when they think about things other than that. But um, that's what I have for you today. So.